this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Microsoft Surface Studio again. So we did a general review of it. You can go and check that one out if you want. We discussed the pros and cons as a computer, as how much money it's worth, all sorts of things like that. General purpose computing, Photoshop, which is fine for Lightroom, that sort of thing. This is the one for you artists, the people who probably really want this and understand why it exists, because Microsoft designed it specifically for artists. Also, you know, Photoshop jockeys and, and photographers and all that sort of thing too. I think less less so for CAD modeling and 3D people because it has okay horsepower, but it's it's not gonna replace some engineer's workstation for CAD. But for artists, this thing is kind of a dream come true. If I won the lottery, I would buy this in a heartbeat. Yes, I would. I'm a hobby artist. I love to do digital painting. I am not a manga person. I don't do comic books, cartoon style drawing. So if you wanna see that, that's not gonna be here. I do natural media style painting, oils, pastels, uh, pencil sketching kind of things. and it is pretty cool. Of course, it doesn't exist in a vacuum, so I'm going to compare it to the uh -oh, iPad Pro, yeah, because I do like that pencil a lot, and also to the Wacom Cintiq Companion, and we're going to be reviewing the new mobile version that Wacom is coming out with in a week or two or so. So that one's going to have a much improved pen, actually, and that already had a pretty good pen, but better all-in-one computer design, but we're going to talk about it now. So how about thick, fat brushes? I'm using an airbrush here. See, I've gone up to 145 pixel size brush. That's a pretty darn big brush. So sometimes the huge brushes lag. I'm gonna do a little background coloring for my popsicle here, and it's perfectly smooth. There's, there's no lag here. This is very usable stuff, so that's nice. And let's put a little contrasting orange there on the background. That's working out absolutely just fine. So I don't have an issue with bigger brushes. Okay, let's go crazy. Let's go and 433 pixel brush and we'll pick yet another color so that it's obvious and we'll, ooh, that would be tasteless. We'll go here. Whee! Okay. A little hard to see that so let's do something terribly ugly like purple. There it is. Look at that. Oh, it actually looks kind of nice. So yeah, it has certainly enough horsepower to do this kind of thing and now we have a psychedelic popsicle placard here. And now for a different kind of drawing, we have something that is just a pencil sketch. And it's really nice being able to draw on this scale, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. Obviously, you got the touch screen. It's handy for rotation. I normally use one of those gloves with the fingers cut off so that, especially being left-handed, I rest my hand here. But the palm rejection is fairly good. Okay, let's not use purple anymore. Let's go to a color like that. And... Something like a traditional pencil. Yeah, maybe we'll get a little fancier. Okay. So say I want to do a little bit of shading. There's a good amount of precision here. There's, there is virtually no parallax. That is, the pen tip is where I think it is relative to where my ink is coming out. So that part is good. And it keeps up. Now, what really bugs me here as somebody who is a pencil sketcher and a, I work in charcoal and pastel as well is there is no tilt pressure here whatsoever. So bummer. You really can't do nuanced shading. But if you're more of an ink comic book drawing style person, then that's probably fine with you because you're not used to really making as much use of the tilt. Now, I know somebody said in the comments in our review of this that that you can't write Chinese characters without tilt support. Now, that's not true. One of our senior editors happens to be Chinese and to be able to write with Chinese characters and using a brush and pressure sensitivity alone can do it just fine. So a little vector touch there. So eraser on the butt, no problem. It takes care of those problems. So this is working pretty well here. Now I know some of you are worried about jitter, diagonal lines. So let's take a look here. I'm gonna draw a quick line always is not a problem. Now a slow line. There's some jitter. It's not terrible. And honestly, I very rarely draw very slow diagonal lines. But you can see the difference. That's not so bad. That is not so bad at all. Now here is something that I did in Corel Painter 2017 on a smaller screen. I actually did this on the Surface Pro 4. And here's what I'm talking about where this is the next step for those of you who are thinking about doing this professionally and actually have to do this for 
medium that requires high resolution. So this looks fine at this size, okay? You know, some of the strokes are a little bit blocky, but as you go in, and let's try to make this zoom in, not so great, right? So if you're using this for something that's going to be poster medium, even high quality gaming graphics, then you just need the bigger screen because you're never going to really see what your image looks like until you put it on the big screen. Now you could do it on the Surface Pro 4 and then proof it on your big monitor, but once you've done this and you say, oh, gee, then you have to go back and try to fix it and figure it out and zoom in a whole lot on your Surface Pro 4. So big screen is indispensable, obviously, if you want to do professional or larger format art. So if you're doing something like web comics, this is absolutely fine, certainly. You don't need big, you don't need high resolution there. Now this is one that I did at a higher resolution, so it looks better now that it's scaled up. So it does help if you're working on something like the Surface Pro 4 or any smaller format device, so Wacom Mobile Studio 13 inch, something like that, to always work in a high resolution, preferably high DPI. So this one doesn't look too bad right here, right? All right, here we are in Clip Studio Paint, otherwise known as Manga Studio. Now, I don't use this so much. I confess I'm not much of an expert at using this program. I am not much of a comic book style illustrator, a manga person. I do more, you know, traditional painting and sketching, that sort of thing. One thing I will say is that the initial, this program vectors a lot more. I have hand vector issues going on here that I don't have with the others. And let's take a look. This supports both real-time stylus, which is the modern API, and WinTab. So what do we have it set at? By default, it's using WinTab. Let's go with tablet PC instead. So we're going to have to restart to do that. The initial force of activation, and this is adjustable, there's a Surface applet that you can use to do this, is still not so great. It's improving. Pressure sensitivity, you, know, you got a thousand levels of pressure sensitivity. That's adequate. But what's really important is the initial force of activation. That's something that the iPad Pro excels at in some of Wacom's higher-end products do too. This isn't that bad. I have a fairly light touch, being not much of an inker, being more of a traditional media kind of artist. This isn't too bad, but if I do it like I would normally do for shading like that, no, it's not picking up. Notice a lot of the strokes are actually not appearing there. So if you have a light touch, if initial force of activation is important to you, that can be a problem. In terms of pressure sensitivity, that, that's very good pressure sensitivity. Very dark, you know, you get very light. That, that stuff is all working just fine. And it keeps up. It's got more than enough horsepower to keep up with doing this kind of crazy stuff right here. And as you saw, big brushes are working too. So overall, you know, it's a really pleasant device to work on. And the room that it affords is fantastic. It has enough horsepower for 2D work. If I was a 3D kind of illustrator, if I was doing more the the top layer, you know, the graphical finishing touches, the painting, on that would be fine. This is not for somebody who is an AutoCAD jockey, has something with a hundred thousand different parts in it or something like that for automotive design. You need something with more horsepower for that. But for, for the front end illustrator, artist kind of person doing some of the 3D work, this 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 actually has enough horsepower. And I'm sorry, that's just not a whole lot of painful jitter there. The pressure sensitivity is good. Like I said, initial force of activation Eh, but you get used to it because, uh, sadly, many products don't have a great initial force of activation if you have a light touch. So you just learn to be a little heavier with your touch. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. That's Wacom and Wacom's EMR pens. And even to a certain extent, their newer AES pens, not as high end according to Wacom, but still very good. Lower initial force of activation, tilt support, big time there for the EMR if you're looking at one of Wacom's higher end products. Versus Entrick here. 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity, that's enough, that's adequate, but kind of high initial force of activation. It means you, you got to kind of press hard before it starts registering your stroke. So it's a different feel, and it really depends on what kind of artist you are. And also about just exactly how different it is to work on the same thing on two different size screens here. So Photoshop, multi-layer painting here. This is a 3,000 by 2,000 canvas, 300 DPI. So that's pretty demanding right there. And I'm using a brush, custom brush right now, 1,881 pixels. So I can see my whole painting here. This is the beginning of a main coastal landscape. And I want to do a little something with, add some highlights in the water. Oh, that's looking kind of pretty, right? That's very nice. So it's easy to see what I'm doing. That works out fine. The pressure sensitivity to a certain extent is controlling properly the the spread of the of the brush right there it's working really well though often i find when i have photoshop custom brushes be they ones that i made or ones that i've downloaded from websites they didn't work quite as well with entry when it comes to the pressure sensitivity actually bringing out the magic in the brush it wasn't there it's working really well here right now so here i have the old 
Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, the one that's just previously been replaced by the new Mobile Studio. Same painting. So look, if I want to have the same scale of working, I have to, because this is a 13-inch screen, I have to zoom way in. So I have no context for the sense of my painting anymore. And there's the whole thing. See, there it is. Now, I couldn't possibly really do that kind of work on the water that zoomed in. So I'm going to have to do something like that. So let's do the same brush over here. And it's doing pretty much the same thing. I still like the way the ink lays a little bit better on this compared to what I got over here. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see. It's a little bit more nuanced. The shape has a little bit more of an organic variety here, which is what this brush should be doing. It's supposed to be good for, well, particularly for water there. So over here, it's not bad though. It's, it's getting close. But there's always just that little something that Entrig feels to me like they're missing when it comes to our product. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pressure curves. No matter how you adjust them yourself, they're just not quite there for as much of the kind of variation that you might like. But that's not bad, actually. That's, that's really some of the best I've seen. And of course, obviously, the joy of this and the professionalism of this being the studio is that you have that big screen to work with so you're not constantly zooming in, zooming out, doing little areas. Now, in the end, whoop, wrong pen. In the end, this is going to be a fine painting too, even though I worked it at this size. And I'll just bring it over to a bigger monitor to get an idea of how it looks for something I might want to print or something like that afterwards. So both of these, as you see me erasing here, happen to have erasers on the back end, both the Wacom product and, and this is the Pro Pen too, and the Microsoft Surface Studio. Now we're going to take a look at the difference that tilt makes. So I'm using, a, using the hard opaque pencil, which is a standard built-in pencil on Photoshop. So I'm drawing, and it looks pretty charcoal and pretty nice, right? And I'm barely touching, which is the way I actually like to sketch, a light thing. So if I want to shade something in, oh, that's just nice. That's really easy. So there's the imaginary cast shadow of a apple we haven't seen yet. There's our little apple right there. So that's working. The tilt really adds something. Though I still swear that the apple pencil tilt feels a little bit more organic. A little bit of lag there, but this is the last generation product. So let's try the same thing on Surface Studio. So here we are, much bigger canvas to work with. This is just whacked right now. This is very odd. So let's go here to our Surface program right here and go to the pen. And the pressure curve I'm using is pretty, mm, well, easy going. So let's try it over here. That looks good there, right? It's pretty sensitive. I'm, I'm barely pressing on I'm liking that. So what happens if we do it here? Oh yeah, that's really good. So good. The problem is that that results in some distortion for some brushes and some programs if you make it that hard. It's still not great. If I tilt this, absolutely nothing happens because the tip is not making contact. So for those of you who are accustomed to doing the kind of sideways shading stuff, it's a lost cause here. That's just the nature of the animal right now with Entrig technology. Now Microsoft's talking about releasing a hybrid pen that will work potentially on this. So we'll see what that brings, but I'm especially with something this expensive. I say don't buy something with hope for what they say they're going to release in the future. Wait till it's out and it meets your needs first. So if you need that kind of tilt support, which is a real natural part of drawing, it's not here. If you're pretty much just a line art drawing type person and you don't really do that pencil style sh shading, well, then it's going to be fine for you. So yeah, if you're an artist and you're, you don't already own a Wacom Cintiq 27Q HD, that sort of thing, which fits into the workflow wonderfully, I, this is very tempting. Because if you go ahead and buy that Cintiq, which is the only other competition in town right now, you're looking, if you want the one has touch and pen, around 2,500 bucks. Then you have to buy a PC or build a PC or a Mac. To, not building a Mac, obviously, but buying a Mac to connect to it because it has no brain. So you're spending about the same amount of money. So this does have enough horsepower to handle any art program well, you know, including a bunch of layers, fat, fat brushes, a thousand pixel brushes, that sort of thing. So you're getting the same functionality here. You, you might not feel like it's a wise buy though, because the horsepower doesn't probably equal that thousand dollar Windows PC, particularly that you could buy. And there's the rub. If you're an artist and you're thinking about this and you don't need that tilt sensitivity or the even higher pressure sensitivity levels of something like the Wacom Cintiq, then 
the one drawback with this is a couple of years down the road, you know, Adobe adds more and more features, for example, in Photoshop. It gets more and more demanding. You can't really upgrade this other than increasing the SSD capacity if you're really geeky and you want to take it apart and replace the spinning hard drive with a faster SSD, two and a half inch SSD. So if you do go something like Cintiq plus a standalone PC, you can upgrade the PC and you still have all the wonderful functionality of your Cintiq. So that's the good and the bad here. The good is you buy it, you turn it on, it just works. Great out of box experience, put your art programs on here, go ahead, draw to your heart's content, it's great. Obviously with Wacom Cintiqs it's more complicated, install the drivers, get the whole thing working, plug in the cables, yada yada but you do have more upgradability in the future. As to which of those works for you, you're the one that knows that because you're you. I'm not. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like the video.